Coming up in episode 45. It showed the judge went six months for this guy because basically, oh, well, he didn't want it to affect his life. That's basically what he said. Six months? Really? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. What is he doing for six months? Probation? Uh, jail time? No, what I is this? I believe it's a six month jail sentence. That's ridiculous. That's, that is ridiculous. Welcome to another episode of The Little Radio Show. My name is Sandra Fernandez, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Juan Alanis and Angelica Casares, and we're bringing you small talk about big topics. This week, we take a look at the fact that Snapchat surpassed Twitter in daily active users, and a look at the prank v. prank breakup. Just a heads up that we are talking a little bit about some heavy topics this week, including the California swimmer rape case, a Brazil rape case, a South Texas teen murder, and a Houston teacher who got pregnant from her 13-year-old student. Yes, that's all in this week. Just a reminder that you can catch us every week on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Central Time at hmsnetradio.org. Our show archives and the link to our iTunes and Stitcher channels are available at thelittleradioshow.com. Well, welcome back for another week. And this week's, in case you missed it, I know that uh, Juan has one tech item. And then I have one not-so-light item I wanted to uh, bring up. And then uh, we can take it from there. So I'll let Juan start. Yeah, so I thought it was uh, it was on the news recently that uh, Snapchat has now surpassed Twitter in the number of daily users. That um, I thought that was kind of cool because that not too long ago Snapchat was a new social network that a lot of people were confused by. I didn't really understand, and I think there's still a lot of confusion about <laughs> it. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think but, that's uh, it's still but, very true. But that's a bit that's a good sign. I think they're they're averaging about 150 million daily um, active users, and according to this report that I'm reading here. Um, it says that uh, Twitter is averaging about 136 million, so it's not a huge, huge margin, but it is still. Was it considering was it? considering that Twitter's de- active daily users have been de- decreasing? Steadily. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Wasn't there a time where they plateaued, where as many people out? Oh my goodness heavens! And that is what happens when you don't do what you're supposed to do, like turn off your phones. Anyways, <laughs> so wasn't there a point where Twitter was actually um, gaining? users and losing users and so they were plateaued and their number was fourth quarter of 20 fourth quarter of 2015 the report for fourth quarter of 2015 Mm. came in that they had plateaued as far as new accounts and they were actively um decreasing in active daily users okay so that means that it was going down the that um no more like not substantial amount of new people were creating new accounts and the people with existing accounts were using it less okay is this like it's i, I guess it's, are we is this, are seeing the beginning of the end of twitter that's one of the things that everyone is this the new myspace well one of the things um that uh they were talking about is you know is this the beginning of the end for twitter and so this year what we've seen is twitter has announced some new stuff that hasn't come out yet including that they're gonna start (laughs) um stop um taking into account things like um pictures pictures and and other stuff against your against your 140 character limit and some other things like that but i haven't seen those roll out yet is that a little too late already either i haven't seen them either but i think that the i think there are still things that twitter is very good for like real like real time um things that are happening like if you're doing I want to have a real time conversation. Like if you're watching the matches, like that are happening right now. But isn't Benadio. that the same as Snapchat? Because isn't Snapchat real time? It's really. not. Okay, there are things that Twitter does that Snapchat doesn't do yet. Right. You can't link to in uh-huh. Snapchat. You can't mm-hmm. go through and track conversations of people that you don't follow in Snapchat. You can't use hashtags in Snapchat. I mean, you can use them, but they're irrelevant. But mm-hmm. the thing is, Snapchat right. is like um, a, is like everybody that, you know, it's kind of a personal, it's a personalized, customized audience that you're that you're reaching. Mm-hmm. So it's not like that content's going to be there tomorrow you or the day after. You have to opt in. Snapchat, right. you absolutely have to go and find that person and opt in. And I'm Twitter, telling you, you I know a lot of people who love, love, love Snapchat. And I, when I teach classes, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for small business owners, 
Twitter, people don't get, you think Snapchat <laughs> is confusing and that Twitter is not. No, 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 no. people don't get Twitter. Oh, They're yeah. like, they just don't understand it. It's like, how do people find me? Why would I want to be on this? Facebook, everybody understands Facebook. Because Twitter, uh, Facebook is very intuitive. And I think the other ones, Twitter and especially Snapchat, well, they're not so intuitive. What Facebook does intuitive. is it makes you put in all of your history and then it finds friends for you based upon the history. On Twitter, you still have to do something mm-hmm. to go out and find them. Yeah. Even LinkedIn makes you put your history in and then it starts to suggest people to you based upon your history. Twitter will suggest people to you every once in a while, like it will, but it's not as fine tuned. But so, but to um, me the way I think about Snapchat is like you're broadcasting and then people elect whether or not they want to see what you're broadcasting. So it's kind of like Snapchat. Yeah, everybody Yeah, that's what I was going to say, but yeah. on Twitter you see everybody's feed. And I think that it can get very convoluted. The conversation can get something like it's not it's not like you said it's not personable, but um I I think it is you know i think this is the end of the time because i think snapchat is just gonna it's gonna roll out other things that you know that we can basically like an, on a very small level that we can do like on facebook or something no i'm a, i'm still a big fan of twitter so i don't i don't want it to go away <laughs> no no, no. I want, it's my twitter is my favorite yeah i like twitter I because it's very interactive not. you can be talking to people that you don't know across the world immediately like you're all watching the same game and you're just interacting and it's it's fun. There's a I way have, around it. I think there's a way around it when you're doing when you're doing things on like Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and, th- and places like that. But the thing is, a Facebook, way around what? A way around the way uh, the uh, the user friendly thing. I think there's there there's a way around. For example, Snapchat has that. Um, has those what is that section where you can watch like discovery and you can watch things like that i think when you're you can participate yeah you can participate in those you can participate on that and i think that you know snapchat is just finding its way around that and i i think i don't know twitter is is it um it's i think it's still you know for the sake of, of everybody out there who loves twitter it's still it's still relevant um but for how long well the thing the thing is just like myspace myspace decrease but it didn't go away and there's an industry for which myspace is still very very relevant it's going to yeah. depend as everything with audience if like for lawyers and doctors for news reporters and other people there are industries where twitter is it mm-hmm. yeah it's it's the you know the most important uh, audience out there are they diminishing yes and if they don't get their act together and start be- to become <laughs> more relevant to their existing user base into an uh, a growing user base, then they might be the MySpace. Yeah, they you know, might. And Friendster and, you know, all, all this other stuff. But one thing I can't, I will say is Snapchat is so much more fun to use. <laughs> well, Snapchat is, <laughs> Snapchat is set up in such a way that you can't really, um, you can't do that thing where you pick the pi- perfect picture from the stuff that you took last month. You've got to take it now. It is live. It's raw. And that's actually right now the huge thing for people is they want this, um, this uh, I don't know, this transparency kind of thing. Yeah. I want yeah. the real you. I want. Mm-hmm. I don't want mm-hmm. to think that you've been scripted. I don't want to think that you've been, you know, all this. Stuff. I want the real you. And Snapchat gives people that sense. I think that happened uh, way when... Um YouTube was coming up and everything was edited. Everything was edited and everything was um, not scripted, but everything was applied in a way to make it sound or seem some way. And that was one of the big conversations that took place in a lot of the comment sections. A lot of the big YouTubers, now they still get it. Like, this is not it. And even the YouTubers would say things like, um, they would say things like, like, this is just five minutes of my life. You don't know my life. And they would take to Twitter. And that was kind of sort of, quote, unquote, real time. But it was just a small conversation. But Snapchat, it's like in the raw, in the, you know, behind the scenes. It's like I, you get to see me without, like, you know, for YouTubers, without the makeup. What I'm really doing, I'm really in bed. And this is what I have to say. And this is, you know. And I think that, I think it was it was a transfer over for big YouTubers. That's why I believe Snapchat is a big deal because there was a big transfer from YouTubers to go behind the scenes. You want to see me every day now? Like you can get a notifications. Like I'm I'm always Snapchatting type of thing, type of deal. And um, I think that's what happened. And, and I think uh, they're just getting started. I think that Snapchat is very new and they still have a long, I mean, I'm sure they have still have things under their sleeves that they're, that they haven't even released yet. But so far, I mean, they've been doing a really good job of staying organic and staying fun. 
Yeah, well, so. and, and that's good. And so I keep saying my mother's on Snapchat, so that's when I knew. Uh, that this, really? Oh, you didn't know my mother's. I'm gonna on Snapchat. follow your mom. Do you are you on her Snapchat feed? Yeah, often. Yes. Good. I'm gonna follow her to follow you, but. Uh, yeah, so I, I think you can, uh, staying on that topic, can I introduce another one really sure. quickly? So on the topic of technology, one of the biggest YouTubers, Prank versus Prank, has, they did a daily vlog, BF versus GF with girl, boyfriend versus girlfriend. Um, they stopped vlogging, daily vlogging, and they blamed it on the daily vlog. They were something of the, the source of, actually, they did a video and they said, um, we don't, if you you're thinking about daily vlogging, don't do it. They were like mm, telling were people out there, it. yeah, they were going against it. They've been doing it for the last seven years, and they said this has tarnished not only our relationship, but it's tarnished like um, it, they've got big opportunities out of it. Out of it, and they're very grateful for it. But they said it's it's it was so impactful in their life that they questioned everything in their life. They said. I don't know if I was doing it for the vlog or I don't know if I was doing it because I love her. And that was a huge hit to the community, the YouTube community. So they, they stopped vlogging altogether or they stopped daily vlogging? No, they broke up <gasps> oh. and they said... So this is a celebrity breakup is what yes, we're talking about. Yes, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, but they became famous on that platform by doing just that. What they said, they were never going to. We don't. They said, we don't know what's going to happen with the channel. We don't know where we're going to do next. What we do know is that we're not going to be together. And if you're thinking about daily blogging, do not do it because you will regretfully do so. You end up doing things that you don't want to do and that you question everything that you did. Wow. I know. I was like, really? Well, you the know, thing, that's their perspective, though. Yeah. The well, thing is that it's very, I would imagine that it's very, like, uh, labor intensive and it's very grueling to do daily vlogs every single day. We do this show just once a week and it's yes. really, and, and if y'all <laughs> have, have realized, we don't actually do it every week at this point. But yeah. yes, we do this just once a week and I'm not even on video. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, I mean, what do you, what do you think? Do you think... Uh, there was a lot of people out there saying things like, well, you know, maybe it was the way they were managing it. Managing it. Maybe they didn't know what they were doing. Okay, first of all, a breakup is a breakup. Uh-huh. Now, did this have stress? If they're saying that they believe it that absolutely this is did. Absolutely I mean, they are what, confirming it. Then, then this is absolutely what, I mean, because what you're telling me is well, they are, is they're celebrity YouTubers mm-hmm. that were living their life in such a way that they were sharing everything via video. That can't, this. But yeah, I, they, there was a moment, I believe, because I, I follow them often, and they would say things like, this is, and even now, he he himself says things like, you only seen like 10, 10, 10 minutes of our life. We edit the video. We edit the video. But then they still blame the daily vlogging of videoing their life. But I guess because they were at such a point where at that point they were doing things that they would never do to to have content. Wow. To make content. And so, but one of the memorable things when they did this video together was the thing he said. He said, I started doing things because I wanted to do it for the vlog, but I didn't know if I was doing it because of the vlogger because I loved her. Okay. And I was like, re- like, and of course, there were some people out there who were like, you know, you don't, uh, I don't think a daily vlog is going to ruin your 10 year relationship. Maybe there's something else going on. But together, collect together them to collectively said no this is it it's kind of like that reality tv like when you're in reality tv and then you like you're showing so much of your life on an ongoing basis that it's just like you you know you end up like affecting your relationship because you're you're like being making yourself so vulnerable to people's opinions and you know then that gets in the way um and so a lot of things happen and and it is are, uh, uh, turning the camera on yourself is that ruining your life I mean if you expose your day to day life like you know going to sleep kind of thing and opinionating on everything does that invite all this that happens into your life and can it ruin your life I think the, I think the thing that I think the thing to keep in mind is that reality TV just like social media is real life and real life is messy and so if you're going to be putting everything out there like if you're not going to be curating like what it is you want to put out there then you are gonna run into some dangerous territory that's gonna be messy and then it's gonna get complicated i like that so you think that real life uh kind of reflects like social media 
Yeah, I think if you, I, I think it's kind of like fame when you're a young celebrity and you don't know what to do with all the fame, or you're, or you have a rags to riches story and you become a millionaire and you don't know what to do with it. This is kind of like the, to me, this is kind of similar because you are get all this instant fame and then you don't know what to do with it because so many people are like watching you and criticizing you and talking about you and telling you things, and so I think that you know you have to be prepared to deal with this online or you know reality tv fame otherwise you're just gonna you may crumble you know you're gonna like not know what to do with it and it's gonna be overwhelming well you know one of the things that most of our um highly successful blogger and video blogger uh friends keep saying is you have to be who you are you have to straight stay true to who you are because it's very very easy for people to start taking sponsorships from brands that mm -hmm. don't reflect mm -hmm. who they are what they do and who they're um who they're uh, audiences that um, they yeah. uh, start to do activities that in no way uh, that in no way uh, connect with their audiences that in no way do this stuff. It's really hard to to stay true to yourself, especially it really when you're is. getting so much it attention. Really mm -hmm. Well, no, I, I think um, the problem I have with staying uh, quote unquote true to myself is that you open your you you leave that space that I don't know how to pronounce this word, guys. You're gonna have to be, help me. Vorn vulnerability. Vulnerability. Oh, vulnerability. <laughs> Every time I cannot pronounce that word to save my life. Um, vulnerable. Yes. <laughs> there you go. That's, and it sounds nice and Spanish. Yeah, it does, actually. <laughs> but uh, you leave that open for criticism, and those are your real thoughts. Those are, and especially if you opinionate on something, it opens you up for criticism. And it, it, you know, it's like watching open heart surgery. Everybody gets to watch and see and where you mess up. And I do. I, I, we try to stay very authentic, and, and so does Sandra. We try to stay very authentic, authentic to who you are, but we do hold back. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, uh, and for good reason, I think so. So I, my, in case you missed it this week, um, is actually going to be going a little bit outside what we normally talk about. Uh, we don't normally do politics. We don't do hard news, even though we touch upon it every once in a while. <laughs> but a few weeks ago, at the point at which this runs, it's going to be a few weeks ago, a California judge uh, came oh down with a sentence, yes, oh. <laughs> on uh, last year on, uh, the, um, on a rape case. Uh, what this was was a Stanford University, uh, oh. uh, a, yeah, he had a swimmer, uh, raped a, a woman. He f was found guilty. The judge gave him a six-month sentence because, quote, unquote, he didn't want to see this detrimentally affect his life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave all of that aside because, dear Lord, I could rant for the rest of the year on the, everything I just said. I'm actually going to go to the letter that his father wrote mm. into the judge, um, you know, as part of the case to, to uh, during sentencing. The father was able to write a letter to well, the judge. Well, the the victim did too to, to an appeal, mm. and the and this has been what? making a lot of buzz online because and this is the sentence that has people so dismayed. The, uh, the father is going on about, you know, what a great kid he is and that he's never shown any violence before and et cetera. I and can then, show violence hold right on. now. <laughs> and then he <laughs> says the phrase that brought the internet down, that his, that his son is going to be paying for the rest of his life for 20 minutes of action. 20 minutes of action. That's how he describes his son raping this girl. 20 minutes of action. That's in his mind. This is what happened. He, his son had 20 minutes of action. Um, and now he's going to pay for it for the rest of his life. And this is how his father interprets this guy raping an unconscious woman. Well, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, that's very infuriating because the 20 minutes that, that were affected in the in the woman's life, well, how is that going to affect her yeah. life? Think and of so, the implications for her. So, yeah. But that, but the, that <laughs> right there, it, okay, here's the thing. You can say that for anything. I, You know, for, for my hot-headedness of 30 minutes, yeah. I shot somebody and killed them. For, yes. I'm going to affect my yeah. life for the rest of... For those that, 30 what? seconds, why should I pay for the rest of my life? But no, no. It showed the judge went six months for this guy because basically, oh, well, he didn't want it to affect his life. That's basically what he said. Six months? Really? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. What is he doing for six months? Probation? Uh, Jail time? No, what I is this? I believe it's a six month.
month's jail sentence. That's ridiculous. That's, that is ridiculous. You know but, what? And you know, that's not even funny because some no. rape, some rapists out there don't even get a sentence. They get yeah. probation. Yes. This, but then this goes back to why like a lot of victims don't come out yes. and say who yes. their aggressor was because they know it's that they're going to go so, to have to go through all that. That brings hell. me to the other one. Uh, same, same. Unfortunately, same topic. Also very big is this case in Brazil. And I don't know if y'all heard about this. The girl? It's, yes, the girl. Who uh, got raped by 20 guys? 30. 30. 30 I'm sorry. 30 I guys. Yeah. And they posted it online. Yeah. That, you know, they drugged her and, you know, she got raped by 30 guys. This is a whole and, culture that, and, that's and, happening. And Brazil is so bad about um, how they treat women, especially the uh, women who have been. Brazil, Brazil and India are two of the, the countries that have uh-huh. received a lot of um, a lot of press in the last couple of years because of this kind of thing because it's not you know, they're supposed to be quote unquote democratic nations yeah. and this is going on forever and ever. So I watched a documentary by Stacy Dooley about uh, the worst three countries to be a female, uh, a female uh-huh. in that country, and one of them was uh, Guatemala. Yes, but even here in the states, that's what that's basically yeah. what one of the girls got sentenced. Um, she was found guilty along with the guy that raped her because uh, she actually filmed she uh, she snapchatted oh, or periscope her friend, friend getting raped, raped. I w- and then her justification was she I was scared to have ev- evidence. yes but you could uh, supposedly that you could see her actually help the rapist by holding her friend down oh wow and yes, uh, but it's that's crazy the, even the the teenager here who recently was found murdered in an apartment complex in Houston yes. she South the, Houston her her murderer which was a 15 year old boy yes he recorded himself while he was raping her yes. and kill, and murdering her and he showed no repentance whatsoever no remorse yeah. no remorse oh well yeah she went with me it's her fault yeah yeah, it's so, like who do it, and then I, I find a problem with myself talk, trying to talk to some of my nieces. Like you got to be careful. I was like, why am I doing this? This you, because, irks me. Yes. Like why am I talking? And then I, I look at my son, and I I'm like, what, what do I do? What do I do? I educate him? Do I educate them? You do. Yes. Do I yes and them? yes. Yeah. And but it, it frustrates me to think that I have to educate the girls. It and it why. It, it baffles me. It yeah. baffles me. So I bring that up, if nothing else, because I just wanted to point out to the letter and to say his son has been found guilty of rape. Mm-hmm. And based on the letter, and I don't know if this is true. I don't know this man. But based on the letter, what he sees is his son, his son had sex, and now he's being punished for it. You know, I think uh, this is probably not a good thing, but one of the things that has come up out of this is that so much mobi- mobility behind it and so much, you know, uh, going about. Um, his picture has been posted everywhere. Yes. And uh, with, I think, uh, as, a, as a meme, Juan, or Mimi, how do you pronounce meme. it? Meme. meme. <laughs> um, uh, saying this is, the rape, this is the face of a rapist. Um, and that's but actually going to follow him for the rest of his life. Even the picture, and a, and a lot of uh, experts will tell you, even the selection of the picture shows preferential treatment to him. They didn't show yeah. his mugshot. Yeah. They showed his swimmer's yeah. photo, him looking all nice. And, yeah, and the they internet show, turned it on yes. you. Yeah. The internet turned it on you, and they were like, nope, this is the face of a rapist. This right here is the problem. This is privilege. And they, they turned yeah, that, they it turned is. it around. And you know what? Um, I, I don't I don't want him I don't want him to be the face of, of a lot of other people who um but unfortunately this is the guy. It, this is the guy and, and you're you're gonna be known for the rest of your life because of this. But this should also be a wake up call for everybody else that you know that this is why we should be more um you know that there should there shouldn't be so much animosity or so much that there should be more resources and more pro- help provided to people who are victims and you know they shouldn't be afraid to come out and you know the more that these stories are out there the more that people think yeah hey you know, you maybe know, i shouldn't come out and say what yeah. happened you know even among my family i had arguments with uh men in my family about this which is one of the reasons why i'm bringing this up because you had like I, an actual conversation with the men the ma- males well, in your family yes because not on purpose. I mean, I was talking with my sisters and the men opened their mouth. But, you know, it's not a cut and dried thing. And, you know, my brother served in the military and in the military. Yeah, I've heard those yes, stories, Yes, yes. Let's not even go there. And I have brothers who are very, tra- brothers-in-law who are very traditional and, you know, etc. And it's hard 
to get them past a lifetime of thinking a certain way where sexuality is permitted to men and not to women and women who are sexual Mm -hmm. are asking for it. Well, what was she doing there being so drunk she asked for it? And I'm like, no, 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 sweetie. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, uh. After, um, you know, literally after my head was done exploding, uh-huh. you know. Oh, well, the, the, here's the thing. So she was, the, the where it took place was behind a dumpster. She was inebriated and he took advantage of the fact. She was passed out. But yes, but, um, yes, because of, of other reasons. But here's the thing. It, it could have been any reason. It could, she could have been drunk. She could have had a seizure. We don't, like, the, either. We don't know. And guess what? Men take advantage of both situations. Not just men. Because here in Houston, no, you're right. there's a case you're right. of a teacher who yeah. had who got pregnant of a 13-year-old student. And so I'm sorry. I consider that to be uh, that. Oh, everyone's going, you know, people are going, oh, well, he was 13. He's a boy. You know, they're making all these jokes. About, oh, he got, he got lucky. No, he didn't get lucky. This is basically a child molester. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what did I tell uh, your nephew brought that up? And what did I say? You know what? I would... If I was mom, and and don't do not take my words, guys. Don't. But the thing is, <laughs> you would have run over her, her with your car. No, <laughs> I told her. You know what? I probably, you know, and I thought this myself. You know, the the system is so messed up. Where they're going to give her something so yes, light that's yes. not going to be justified. If I would. That had been a male teacher who impregnated a thirteen year old girl. They would, we have, would not be having this right. conversation. And you're There's right. There's a double they're standard. Lenient. They're lenient. Saying. Like it's different. It's it's viewed like very. It's differently viewed because, differently yeah. because men are supposed. Oh, well. Oh, he just got started early. No, 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 no. She <laughs> she used her power in that class as a authority figure, and she took advantage of him. And I know that ever, there are people out there making making light of this. It's not. She's a child molester. This well, the woman. thing is, at yeah, thirteen, is. you're not able to make your own decisions, no. so you're being manipulated into doing a lot of things that you don't because you don't know any better. And I think a lot of the a lot of these women prey on the on these yes. boys specifically for that. And so I don't want you know yeah. I, I introduce a conversation. I don't want to go through and say there are only men are rapists. Oh, men are not the only ones out there that are doing but, s- and are I agree. sexual misconduct. They're not the only ones. And I agree because she is an educated woman who had a vulnerability, uh, uh, that word, who had a moment and took advantage of that moment. And now she's going to get a light, sen- a light sentence or a light, you know, a slap on the well, wrist kind of thing. She'll probably get a lighter sentence than if she were male. Yeah, and you're right. And it was so, anyway, so one of the things I told the nephew was, you know what, I, I wouldn't even turn her in. What I would do is I would K-I-C-K her <laughs> bootay and then look for her again a week later and then do it again and look for her a week later and then do it again. And then, but I, because it's just not, you can, there's just nothing out there that I can, you know, that, that the system is going to do to satisfy yeah. what they did to, you know, your kid is going to be different for the rest of his life because of this one action. Yes. But there, but there are cases uh, many cases now where yes. they've actually, uh, they, the kids wait them out and then they, and then they wait for them to, to, to the kids turn 18 and then they get married and then they have kids and, you know, to me, that's like that's sad for the child because. And on that note, <laughs> and on that so, look, note. I think that this this week's entire episode is going to be in case you missed it. I have one last item. I do. I have one more actually okay. too. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. So uh, this will we be were, the last one. So you, yeah. So you mentioned um, you mentioned you mentioned the the culture, but I wanted to bring up that uh, Miss USA. Uh, an Army Reserve officer, yes. an IT analyst from the District of Columbia, was crowned Miss USA 2016. Woo-hoo! I know. I was... <coughs> excuse me. I was an Army Reserve officer. I think this is a first for the Army. I thought that was pretty cool news. Yeah, all I can go go and say is they are going to be relentless with her when she finally gets back to the to the. To the oh. I mean, seriously. <laughs> oh, with the beauty queen. The you beauty know, queen. Don't, don't you know, miss your, her is... highness. Don't don't tell anything to her highness. <laughs> but this is cool. A lot of the times, it's people. It's those who have a, a, a kind of a career out of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They've been in pageants and they've been going on and they've been and so to think that. She's had the opportunity and she won not because she was in the army. We all found out that she was in the army way when she won. Well, because this that's cool. what made it news. No yeah. offense. That's the first thing one of my sisters go, oh, is it the army girl that won? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even know about that. There are thousands upon thousands of women serving in the military now. It doesn't take away from their capabilities. It doesn't take away from their intelligence. But um, we have so many 
men and women going through the military now that not seeing someone in a uh-huh. beauty pageant yeah. would actually be yeah. ridiculous. So I, I did want to bring this up. And so, Deshana, congratulations. <laughs> Woo-hoo! And that's this week's In Case You Missed It. And that's this week's show. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Little Radio Show. We invite you to check out our iTunes and our Stitcher channels and leave us a rating or a review. You can find the link to both channels at thelittleradioshow.com. 